Hey guys, how's it going? This is Daryl again. Yeah, I know I've been saying that it feels weird to not say Tuss before saying my name, but I feel like changing it up because why not? Like I said in my previous video, today I wanted to start down the tracks of a bit of a shooter run. There's a no Russian joke somewhere in there, but I'm not going to make it, even though I just implied it. Anyway, I wanted to talk about Trepang 2. Trepang squared? Yeah, probably Trepang squared. Am I even saying Trepang right? I don't, I don't remember. I finished the game not too long ago or by the time this video goes up, probably a while ago, who knows. And I've got to say, the game is batshit crazy in all the best ways for me. I play the game on a combination of normal and hard difficulty, and while normal is kind of on the more chill side, it can still get you killed if you're careless. Hard requires more thought and management of your abilities. And beyond those two difficulties, there are four more. Easy, very hard, extreme, and rage mode. You can pick the difficulty of each mission per mission. Yes, that was as awkward for me to say as it was for you to hear. Why aren't I re-recording it? Because whatever, you got my point. You select a mission and you pick a difficulty, that is all. In fact, I'd say you're incentivized to play a mission on more than one difficulty because there are different unlocks and different things you can do when you're playing on a harder difficulty, like different goals to achieve. At least for some missions. I'm not saying your goal overall per mission changes. I'm just saying like your target is this person, but you can only get to said target if you play on very hard difficulty. You want to unlock this cheat in the cheats menu. You have to play on this difficulty, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I should talk about what Chapang 2, Chapang Squared is to begin with. Chapang 2, Chapang Squared is a fast paced first person shooter with a lot of energy from the old fear games, specifically the first one in my mind. Actually, maybe more of the second game. Not sure. It definitely isn't the third one though. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. What this means is that Chapang 2, Chapang Squared is a horror game as well as a shooter. Though unlike Fear, I can't say this is necessarily as scary. Granted, credit where credit is due, this game was made by an indie studio as their first, their very first game. And I have to say it's a solid debut title and the music kicks ass. So if you don't buy the game, then at least buy the soundtrack. Now, when I say they're an indie team, I'm not saying that excuses them from whether or not they can make a game scary. I'm just pointing it out as fact. This is the first game from the studio that I could see on Steam. This game only really had one point in time where I genuinely was like unsettled. Otherwise, eh. Gunplay is tight and will often have you sliding from one side of the room to the other, because despite being a super soldier with the ability to cloak yourself and use bullet time, even your weakness is bullets. I guess we found out his weakness. Bullets. Thankfully, combat gives you a lot of opportunities to not only feel like a badass, but also make you look like a badass. Use what you can find in the environment to your advantage and destroy some explosives. Use your melee button between reloads while you're in bullet time to quickly stun some stunnable opponents to give yourself a second to reload before blowing their brains out, or just grab them and throw them away like the trash they are. Surprise, motherfucker. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. The game gives you a fun little tool set to use for. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about the the clip before. The game gives you a fun little tool set to use for combat, and you really should. That said, you won't just be fighting human enemies; you'll also be fighting spooky enemies. I won't spoil them all here, but you'll encounter some mission exclusive enemies that will remind you why this game is heavily inspired by fear. That said, if you're worried that the game might be too scary for you, 
As I said earlier, I guarantee you that there's only one main mission that really tries to get under your skin. The others are pretty by the numbers if you've played enough horror games or enough horror shooters. Well, except for one of the side missions that genuinely gave me the spooks for a little bit. But you know what? You'll be fine. That said, that is one main mission out of six. That's right. Six. The game isn't that long and you can beat it in one sitting. But in fairness to the game, there are plenty of side missions and side activities, a combat simulator for horde levels, and a survival mode DLC that goes deeper into that combat simulator stuff. That said, I say that said a lot. With the game being about $30, that may not be enough content for the asking price. For me, I don't really remember what price I got the game at, but let's assume I got it for $30. Do I feel satisfied? Honestly? Half and half. On the one hand, the game is a lot of fun and great for a quick fix, but I honestly don't see myself coming back to it very often, if at all. But on the other hand, short gaming experiences don't bother me too much at a $30 price point. And if it had gone any longer, it would have become very repetitive. So I think they hit the sweet spot here. And it's not like the levels are super short either. I'd say each level is about maybe... 30 to 45 minutes long, maybe an hour if you're on the harder difficulties and it takes you a bit longer. Let's go over the story real quick because there is a story to this game. You play as Subject 106, a super soldier broken out of captivity by- This right here is my favorite thing ever in the history of forever. I think about this every day. I think about this- I think the story has some nice, if not predictable twists and is enjoyable as a whole, but don't expect this game to tug at your heartstrings or anything. It's very straightforward and fully aware of how crazy it is. With all that said though, I do enjoy the dialogue and the banter between different characters. There's an angst or edge to it that I just don't hear a lot anymore because everyone's so afraid of sounding edgy or angsty and I'm like, no, 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 bring back the edge. Because sometimes it fits certain vibes especially when it's fully aware of how goofy it is with its edge. And when I say fully aware, I don't mean in the sense that they're parroting themselves or any other work. I mean, they full send it. And when you full send stuff like that, that's when it's good, even when it shouldn't be. Like it tries to be edgy at times, but not so edgy that it's cringe. You know what I mean? Just enough where you can crack a smile sometimes at the absurdity of it all. Quick honorable mention before I give the final verdict, there is customization in the game, surprisingly. For your gun, sure, that makes sense, but also for you, Subject 106. You never see your full body, you just see your hands, sleeves, feet, legs. So why they'd even include this kind of feature, I'm not sure if I'm being honest, but hey, why not? I rocked the faith look because I'm doing everything I can to desperately hold on to the lingering spirit of Mirror's Edge that EA is trying to get rid of. Okay, they haven't really been trying to, but they also haven't brought it back, so it's the same thing for me, okay? Let me have this. Chipang 2, Chipang Square. I'm not gonna do the joke again, don't worry. Gets a go for it. And I could definitely recommend this game to anybody who loves or even just dabbles in shooters. It can be spooky from time to time, sorta of, kinda, of, but nothing like the likes of most other horror games or horror shooters out there. Minor spoiler, and this is mostly for people that, that are like me. There's only one blanket screen, I'm gonna put that in quotes, jump scare. So if you're anything like me and hate it when you're playing a horror game and you're fine with jump scares that happen in front of the character or somewhere in the distance, but then when there's a scare that just takes control from you and blankets your screen with a scream, you're fine. There's only one of those and then you don't get another one. You're welcome. I'll be honest, sometimes I wonder how I got through Dread Out because Dread Out loved doing the whole blanket jump scare screen thing and i absolutely hate that so much not because it's scary but but because, but you know you know i'm not gonna go on the rant now i'm not gonna go on the rant now you get it you'll be fine there's only one in this game and it's not even that scary if i'm being honest japan squared is available on pc ps5 xbox series x and s amazon luna surprisingly i don't know is, is that i don't know i don't, I don't use that and geforce now for $30 for anybody who uses those last two platforms. And obviously $30 everywhere else too. I just wanted to, you know, jab at those two platforms. Not anyone who uses it, just jab at the platforms. You do you. And with that, I hope you've enjoyed your stay. I'm Tuss Daryl, and I'll catch you guys next time. Specifically with an old friend, an old furious friend. Later. <laughs>